The Strike Gundam is an odd design for me personally. It's not one I really count amongst my like top 5 or 10 favorite Gundam designs. Yet, every time I get a model kit of the Ale Strike, or kind of the Strike by extension, it is usually one of my favorites of that grade. The high grade Cosmic Era Ale Strike is one of my favorite high grades of all time. It's simple but entirely effective. The real grade Build Strike is one of my favorite real grades for as finicky as it is, and I do think it is an improvement over the Ale Strike. The entry grade build strike thing, the newer one, I can't even remember, I've reviewed not too long ago. The basic frame of the Ale Strike is there and it's phenomenal. It It's a lot like the High Grade Cosmic Era to be honest, and seeing what they're doing with like the expansion and extension packs is phenomenal. That's something I've always wanted Bandai to do is have a cheap option to get the sword, launcher, and ale strike all together without having to shell out for a new model kit every time. But that leaves me to the Master Grade version RM here. Is this going to be one of my favorite Master Grades, or is this going to be kind of the weird one out amongst my strike model kits? Well, we'll see. Because this is the review of the Master Grade Ale Strike Gundam version remastered, and it is brought to you by none other than those fine folks over at Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is your one-stop shop for all things Playmo and Gunpla here in North America. With flat rate shipping to the US and Canada, a private warehouse option, and a vast catalog that's restocked regularly, they're going to have whatever you're looking for. When you're checking that catalog and placing your next order, don't forget to use the promo code GUMPLA NETWORK to save yourself 10% off. Now first things first, let's take a look at the overall aesthetics. This, much like its high grade counterpart, is exactly what it needs to be. It's accurate. The Strike Gundam is not overly complex. It is four colors in total. You have the yellow, you have the red, you have the blue, you have the white. It doesn't go to real grady where it's got some bone white in there. It is literally just those colors. And it does it well. You have some panel lining opportunity, but most of it's already pre-layered pre plastic, so you don't even really need to do that. This really goes to it just not only being done from a color standpoint and engineering standpoint with the layering well, it's proportioned incredibly well. The head is one of the best head sculpts for a strike I've seen, and I think the high-grade Cosmic Era Ale Strike has one of the best high-grade head sculpts, and I think the Build Strike, which I like that design anyway, is one of the better real-grade head sculpts. So, yeah, on at least the visual side of things, from proportion, from color separation, to engineering of the layered plastic, it's exactly on par with the other ones, so... Yeah, uh, visually at least it is stacking up to ranks among its peers. Now, I did a separate little visual aspect here for the AL Strike pack itself, uh, largely because it feels a little more aggressive, kind of looks like a Stingray, uh, I think that's very intentional, uh, and I kind of am on the fence about it. It's not bad. But I think it's maybe a little overdone. I don't necessarily think you need the gray parts on the bottom thrusters. I don't think they look bad by any means. I don't think they really need to be there. I don't think the built-in gimmick for the perfect strike needs to necessarily be there. I understand why they did it, but at the same time, it just kind of feels a little weird. And the white tail thing, I feel like the hair long. But that's pretty much it. Everything else is done well. Like, I like the aggressive wings. I like that they have the flaps that actually work, even though it is just kind of another annoyance in posing. It's neat that they're there. And everything else is just exactly what it needs to be. Now, once you combine the two, you do see the differences in complexity. The backpack is not necessarily over complex, but by comparison to a fairly basic strike design, even executed well, it stands out a little bit. Now, one of the cool things about this is not only does it mix pretty well, 
both are proportioned incredibly well. The Strike can stand with the Ale backpack on, and that backpack is not light. It stands flat-footed, you don't even really have to draw the legs back too much, and you don't really have any issues with it being wobbly. It's phenomenal, I mean the Exceed frame for being fairly old is very stable. Now, I will so say a little later on, uh, my Aegis's ankles have just gone away, they just don't exist anymore, they're just powder, uh, so maybe over time this is going to be a little wonky. But I think this is going to fall closer in line with the Buster Gundam to where it is just really solid for a long time. Which brings us into the articulation of this bad boy. And, you know, does the articulation stand up to how good it is visually? Generally, yeah, 100%. Uh, I mean, you can get cool running poses kind of like this or kind of reaching out poses. You do get two expressive reaching hands. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can use them on either hand. I usually use them with the shield just because I like them more than the fist. But you also get to see that the foot separates in kind of the one spot in the forefoot, if you will. Uh, and it, it, it works fairly well. Now, if you don't like the open expressive hands, you do have closed fists. I'm sure there's someone out there that will use them, but I can't imagine there's a bunch of people that will. But you do have them, and it's a nice inclusion that everyone kind of just expects at this point. Now, if you do prefer the holding hands that aren't like the trigger hands, you do have two sets of them. You have one without the peg for holding stuff, which is in the right hand here with the armor Schneider blades. And the left hand, which is holding it in reverse, uh, is going to have the peg in it. So you do have options. You can do this with the beam sabers as well. Uh, now... I think the beam sabers are a little bit more finicky depending on your pose, but you can absolutely use either and they work quite well. Now, I will say, the Armor Schneiders did not go back in their sheaths after this and will forever live in a plastic bag because I spent about 15 minutes trying to get them back in and only really achieved knocking the side skirts off, which is the only part I've had fall off on this, so... Yay, I guess, question mark, I'm not sure. Now, if you do decide to use the beam rifle, you have the trigger finger hand. You do have one for each side, I believe. Uh, Kira's not left-handed, so I don't know why you do it, but go for it, I guess, if you want to. Uh, and then you also have the swivel handle on the beam rifle that can be held in the other holding hand. You can do the either pegged holding hand or the open one. It doesn't really matter here. And, yeah, proportionally, once again, an accessory done incredibly well. The hands work even if the trigger finger feels a little wobbly when you're putting it in. Once it's in the hand and the thumb is around, it's very, very stable. You don't have to worry about it all that much. Which brings us to kind of the other basic accessory in the shield. And, once again, proportionally done incredibly well. Much like its high-grade counterpart, proportionally, this is on par so far and the only thing we have to get to accessory wise is beam sabers and they are too so yes this is a incredibly well executed master grade the shield's not too big it's not too small and sure from a practical standpoint is maybe a hair too small but in the grand scheme of the ale striking kind of purely focusing on the aesthetics of it it works incredibly well, it doesn't block too much of the Gundam, and it feels very sharp and in line with the rest of the design. Now, if you decide to put it up on a stand that isn't the stand it comes with, because the stand it comes with is incredibly deep, we'll talk about it in a minute, you can pull off some cool thrusting poses. The backpack has enough articulation, the torso is strong enough to work with that articulation and articulate itself, and then the legs are able to move all around. You may bump them into the side skirts if you're not careful, and one of them may pop off, but they're fairly easily fixed. So you have some options there if you want a kind of somewhat dynamic pose. This is more of your kind of like static flying pose, if we're being honest, but you can absolutely pull it off. If you decide to bring that shield forward, though, and kind of like have a stopping motion, maybe get some of the flaps in there on the backpack, you can absolutely do so more defensive pose you're bringing the shield around and once again the shield being proportioned well 
makes this possible without looking too goofy. Now, of course, depending on the angle your shelf is at from where you are you know, sitting or where you're typically in the room, that can change, but the shield is small enough and at, at an angle enough that you're still going to be able to see the vast majority of the strike gun. Now, if you do put it on the ground again with the strike or the ale strike backpack on, you can absolutely do it and it still holds just fine. And once again, you have those holding hands, once again, one with the peg, one not, holding the beam sabers and they work quite well. Now, if you do try to tip the beam saber a little bit too far forward, the regular holding hand has friction enough to keep it in, but it is a little less secure. So keep that in mind as you're doing that, especially if you're trying to do kind of the reverse slashing thing that Kira is known for later in Freedom. Now, in comparison to its kind of brethren here with the Aegis Gundam, I will say this feels so much more sturdy. Now, of course, it's brand new. Kind of take that as you will. The Aegis ankles just, like I said, are just non-existent at this point. It is literally leaning against the strike to stay upright. Uh, but if you have these two on your shelf, you can have them in like a diorama fighting, or you can just have them side by side and they look great. Now the Aegis is a weirder design, of course. You're not going to see nearly as much similarity in uh, the Ale Strike or just the Strike in general as you would with like the Buster or the Duel. But it is cool to have them next to each other. And if you have one, I would say don't hold yourself back from getting the other. But it, let's say you have one of the more basic suits. Maybe it's the Buster. Maybe it's the Duel. Well, you get to see that representation here. Unfortunately, I don't have the Duel yet. But the Buster is a good representation for the more basic frames of this kind of original GAT uh, line of Gundams from Gundam Seed. You see more similarities in the legs. You see some of the bulkier stuff. You see the same thing in the forearms. And yeah, I mean, it looks good. These two next to each other, I think you see much more similarity in than that of the Aegis. And I actually have these two closer on my shelf than I do the Ale Strike and the Aegis. So take that as you will. And this is kind of where I would say if you have one or two of these original Gundams from Gundam Seed, I think it's well worth looking into getting at least a few more, if not completing that line, uh, largely because they look really cool together, and it's cool to see the design similarities, I think. But that's also my personal opinion, so take that with a grain of salt. If you decide to have a more strike-centric shelf, having it alongside the high-grade Cosmic Era L Strike is just fine. I don't think either one of these invalidates the purchase of the other. Now, of course, space and budgetary concerns can change that. But I think the high-grade Ale Strike being one of the better high-grades is totally fine. If you want to have the Master Grade, I think it is just as good, just in Master Grade. So you're not going wrong either way. Obviously, if you're more a Master Grade builder, the Master Grade is going to be the direction you go. But if you want a nice representation of the Ale Strike, in the 1144 scale, the high grade is still a solid option. Sticking with Kira suits, though, if you have the Freedom 2.0, here it is next to that. I think it looks fine. Obviously, the Freedom 2.0 is more stylized, so they don't exactly match, but they're not like horrifically <laughs> too different to where you can't have them on the same shelf. Hopefully your shelf's quite big though, because both of these are fairly large in terms of their wingspans. So kind of take that as you will. Now, kind of going tentatively to the final arc of Kira in the Master Grade form, the Master Grade Strike Freedom. And once again, solid. Like just like the original GAT suits, the original five Gundams, this is not nearly as stylized as the Freedom 2.0. So having this next to the Ale Strike, phenomenal. I think, like, style-wise, they look great. If you put some of the dry transfers on, even better. These are great representations, and if you have a Kira or Seed shelf, having the Strike, the Freedom, and the Strike Freedom all on the same shelf or within close proximity is a phenomenal 
phenomenal way to have a Gundam Seed display done. So overall, what do I think about this kit? I mean, I didn't really talk too much about the stand, largely because I don't have it on the stand on my shelf right now. Now, of course, the, the footage you're seeing is obviously different uh, <laughs> of my shelf, but uh, that was pre-review, so just kind of take that as you will. The stand is cool. I'm not going to lie. I love the idea of having it be like the Archangel launching platform. That is sick. I love that idea. It is entirely too deep. That's not even like a... Like, there's nothing they could do about it. That's just how it's designed. Like, proportionally, once again, it makes total sense. It's just too deep for my shelf, so I can't really use it without just taking up way too much space on my shelf. If you can use it, I think it's a phenomenal display piece. But I have it standing in a static pose next to the Blitz, or the Buster and the Aegis, and it looks fine. I love it. So, yeah, this is a kit much like its contemporaries in the high grade, real grade, and entry grade form that if you just like building model kits, you maybe aren't as big into Gundam, but you really like the building process, you like the creative aspect of it, 100% a must buy, right? It is a probably for the original five Gundams, maybe the pinnacle. Now, of course, you're going to have more gimmicks in the Aegis. You're going to have more gimmicks in the duel as well with the Assault Shroud. And maybe the aesthetics of the Buster or the Blitz are more kind of your preference. But I think overall, in a comprehensive package, the Master Grade version RM Strike is exactly what you want it to be. So, yeah. If you just like building, must buy. If you're a Seed fan, obviously same deal. If you don't like Gundam Seed, this or the high grade are the two suits I would tell you, or even the entry grade when they have the like sword and launcher come out. Those are the ones I think get you in from purely a model kit building perspective because they're all great examples of their lines. And at the very least, from an engineering standpoint are going to be some of the more solid kits you're going to have on your shelf. So thanks for sticking with me for almost 20 minutes. Didn't intend to go that long. Sorry, guys. A lot of footage here and a lot of things to say. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me. I too, truly appreciate it. I've been the Spicer here for the Gunpla Network. As always, friends, do your best to stay safe and keep on building.